Hi, this presentation is to help us prepare for the chapter containing logarithmic, logarithmic and exponential functions. <clears throat> I want to start off by following, finding the limit of the following expression. Often when we have an algebraic expression and we're asked to find the limit, we can substitute in the value of the limit we're approaching and just get the number. Unfortunately, this time we are looking at um, the limit as n is approaching infinity. Since we can't plug that into in our calculator, we're going to have to have another means of computing the limit. Any suggestions? That's right, we can go ahead and use a table. A table will always work. So let's set up our table. And oops, I need to use n. So I'm going to set up my table. I'm going to input values for n and then compute the values for 1 over n to the nth power. So, um, what numbers should I plug in to my uh, calculator for n? I want to have the limit as n approaches infinity. I wouldn't normally start off with such a no low number, but I want to plug in 1 because I can compute it easily. So I get 1 over 1, which is 1, plus 1 is 2, and then 2 to the first power is a 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in a few more values. I'm going to use 10. I'll use 1,000. I'll try 10,000 and I'm even going to go out one more to 100,000 and see what I get. Um, the type of calculator you use is going to vary but I'm using this screenshot here for the TI-84 and I've already gone ahead and plugged in the function, function as you can see and created a table and these are the values that I've come up with. So let me go ahead and write these down on our, our list but um, if you notice, these are not going to infinity, they're not going to 1, it's not approaching 2. It seems to be approaching some number 2.718. And um, I'm wondering if anyone recognizes that. So let me go ahead and fill in our table here. 2.5937, 2.7169, and again there's more decimals after that. 2.7181 continues, and then 2.7183. Does anyone recognize this special number? This is E. It is um, not a magical number, but it's uh, actually called a transcendental number. And its definition is that limit right there. Okay. We're going to be doing a lot this chapter with that number E. Okay. Um, before we go any further, I want to um, practice a little bit inputting logarithmic and exponential functions on your calculator. Again, your calculator may be different, so I need you to play around with the calculator that you're going to be using in our class on homework, quizzes, and tests. So I'm going to start by looking at the expression e to the 5 halves. On your calculator, we have a log button and natural log. ln is the natural log, it's base e, and if you notice above it, it should be the a yellow key, a blue key, a shift key, second function key. Um, that's our, our e, e to the x key. So I need to hit second function, e to the x, and it's going to go ahead and pop open parentheses and we input what we need there. So let me show you on my special calculator here. Okay, so inputting e to the 5 halves, I'm going to hit my second function key, ln, so that gives me my e to the x and then 5 divided by 2 close parentheses and I end up with the expression 12.18249 I'm asked to round it off to three decimal places so I need to go up four decimal places and then round back so in this case here I have 12.182 okay. um, the next example Again, there's some variation how you input it in your calculator. You can do the entire expression at one time. You can do it in pieces. Uh, a couple things to watch out for is on this exponent, it's a negative. Make sure that you are using the um, make sure that you are using the negative key, negative sign key down here, and not the subtraction sign. Also, the parentheses. These parentheses are indicating multiplication. Do not use the parentheses keys on your calculator you want to have the entire exponent in parentheses. So I'm going to take 50 Oops. I'm going to take 50 
times, and then I want my e, so second function, ln. Now inside parentheses, again, I want a negative, so I'm using my minus key, point zero three five times eight. And so my entire exponent is in parentheses. Now enter. And I have 37.78918, blah, blah, blah. Rounding that us off again to three decimal points, I will use 37.789 for my answer. Okay, next one, I want the natural log of the square root of 30. So I'm going to use my natural log button. I'm looking for the square root key, which on here is above the x squared, so second function, x squared. And now I can plug in my 30. I have two sets of open parentheses, so I'm going to close both. Enter. 1.70059. So I'm going out four places. The 5 tells me to round up. So on this one, I have 1.701. Um, natural log of 15 divided by the natural log of 5. It would be easier for us if I could take 15 by 5 and just find the natural log of 3, but those are not equivalent. <clears throat> expressions. So I need to take the natural log of 15, natural log of 15, make sure you close parentheses on this one or you will get the wrong answer, and I have to divide that by the natural log of 5. And I come up with 1.6826, again going out four places and rounding back, I will use 1.68 and three. Yep. Okay. Um, last one here, a number of ways to input it. Um, I want to talk about the answer key just a little bit. So this time I'm going to put in um, and compute the natural log of 45 first. The natural log of 45 equals, and then I'm going to hit plus six. And notice that it takes my last answer and adds six to it. And so now I get 9.8066. Going out four, rounding back to three, I will use 9.807. Okay. All right. Um, properties of exponents. We will be using a little bit with our um, manipulating exponents in this chapter, more so with logarithms. But properties you should have learned in an intermediate or college algebra class. You know that when you have the same base and you are multiplying, we add exponents. If you have the same bases and you're dividing, the rule is to subtract exponents. When you raise anything to the zero power, you get one, the exception being zero. Zero to the zero power is not defined. And then a negative exponent we've discussed previously is the reciprocal. Two other things I want you to know about the exponential function are the domain and range. The domain for the exponential function e to the x is all real numbers. You can plug in any value, any real number you want for x. The range, however, is restricted. It's going to be 0 to infinity. Um, taking a quick look at the graph, you have a y-intercept at 0, 1. To the right, you're going to have exponential growth. It increases without bound, and it does so at a very fast rate. To the left, we are approaching y equals zero. That's a horizontal asymptote. Okay. So let's use some of these properties to manipulate um, expressions with exponents in them. I'm going to use base e since that's what we're going to stick with this semester. Uh, the first one here, I have uh, a product. I'm multiplying two expressions, both with the same base, so the rule says add your exponents. Remember that there is an imaginary exponent of 1 here. So adding my bases together, I have e, whoops, I get uh, e raised to the 2.4w plus 1. And that's all there is to it. My next example, I'm dividing, rule says same base, dividing, we're going to subtract exponents. The e's do not cancel. I have the same base. So we have e to the 2x minus 5. Again, there's nothing more to be done with this problem. It's just a matter of manipulating it. And then the last one. Here I have e raised to the x plus y. It looks like everything's already been done. This time I want you to go ahead and break it apart. When we discuss differential equations, sometimes it's necessary to 
separate the variables. And this is one way we would do it with an exponential expression. So we know that when we were multiplying, we added exponents. So if you are adding exponents, that means we are multiplying. So this becomes e to the x times e to the y. We'll use this last type when we're looking at differential equations. Sometimes it'll become necessary to separate the variables and this will allow us to separate um, x and y with exponential functions. Okay, now let's look at the properties for logarithms. Um, similarly with exponents, with logarithms we have product, quotient, and power rules. Here if you are multiplying you add the logarithms just like when you're multiplying you add exponents. If we are dividing we're going to subtract logarithms and if it's raised to a power then you're going to multiply by the exponent. We have two additional properties. One of them is the inverse property and if the bases are the same they're going to undo each other. So natural log of e to the x is just x. Whatever is in the exponents that's what we're left with. Um, the next one this is our definition for a logarithmic expression. It helps us convert between the logarithmic and the exponential form and this will aid us when we are solving equations involving logarithms just like this one will help us when we're solving equations involving exponential expressions. Let's take a moment to look at the graph of the logarithmic function. We have a we have an x-intercept at 1, 0 to the right of 1 our function is increasing without bound. Notice that though it is growth is very very slow. Between 1 and 0 we are decreasing without bound. So as we get close to 0 our graph is decreasing without bound. We are going to have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis or at x equals 0. So domain is going to be from 0 to infinity and our range is going to be all real numbers. If you know on your calculator if you try to input the um, log of negative 5 or the log of 0, you should get a domain error or an input error. Okay, so let's put these properties to use. First one here, I'm taking the natural log of e raised to some power. Here I'm making use of our inverse property. Because the bases are the same, they're going to cancel each other out. And I'm left with my exponent, 3x squared plus 1. That's it, there's nothing to be done. That's the whole thing. On the next example, I have a quotient, so I'm going to be using my quotient rule. Remember when we are dividing, we subtract logarithms. So this is going to be the natural log of the numerator, 12v minus 18, and then I subtract from this the natural log of our denominator, v squared plus 3. I'm going to examine it to see if there's anything else I can do further. In this example, I can't. The 12v minus 18 cannot be separated because I'm subtracting. We can only separate them or manipulating if we are multiplying or dividing or have it raised to a power. So this one here is also finished. On my third example, I have two things we can do. First, notice that I have a product. x cubed y means x cubed times y. So I'm using my product rule and I will write this as the sum of the natural log of x cubed and the natural log of y. Now this first expression can be simplified further because I have an exponent. This will come down as my coefficient. So now I can write this as 3 times the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. All right. For my last example, I have a cube root. Now none of the properties I gave you had anything to do with cube roots or square roots. So how can I rewrite this in such a way that I can use the properties just given to you? Right. As we noted in previous classes, I can rewrite a radical using uh, rational exponents or fraction exponents. So this can be rewritten as the natural log of x squared plus 5 raised to the one-third power. Now that it is written as an exponent, I can use my power rule like I did previously and I have one-third times the natural log of x squared plus 5. One last thing I'd like to note on this final example these parentheses are very important. If you don't have these parentheses, then you're taking the natural log of x squared and then adding 5 to it, which is a completely different number than taking x squared plus 5 and finding its natural log. Okay, so parentheses are very important.